under 23 NBA players with the most approved in Orlando. Subscribe to Sports Mafia for more videos. First up is Jared Allen, Brooklyn Nets. Jared Allen is one of the few recognizable faces left on the depleted Brooklyn Nets roster, has an extension and a starting spot to go earn, and he might be on the trade block. After having his role diminished this season to accommodate DeAndre Jordan, he's now tasked with sinking or swimming as a focal point. Jordan isn't playing on Orlando. Neither are Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Wilson Chandler, Torian Prince, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Nick Claxton. I don't want to say I'm the last big standing, as bad as that sounds, Allen said. There is some pressure for me to be able to stay healthy and be able to help the team succeed. Allen has emerged as one of the league's more reliable interior anchors, and he's proven to be an explosive finisher at the basket. Those are helpful skills, but neither demands the Nets keep him around for the long haul, let alone iron out a contract extension this offseason. With the league devaluing interior bigs, this is Allen's chance to show that he brings something else to the table or he's at least one of the best rim runners in the business. The opportunity is immense, but the individual stakes are even greater. Next up is Lonzo Ball, New Orleans Pelicans. Year 3 has undeniably been a breakout campaign for Lonzo Ball. Something about the New Orleans Pelicans fits him better than the Los Angeles Lakers ever did, and the stat sheet is showing that increased comfort level. His shooting rates have climbed across the board, and he's only one of 5 players averaging 12 points, 7 assists, and 6 rebounds. I think he's in a good place just mentally, Pelicans head coach Alvin Gentry told reporters. I think he realizes that we totally believe in him, that he's our leader on the floor. It's been a feel-good story so far, but there are now 3 distinctly different paths for Ball to follow. If he takes best case scenario Boulevard, He'll prove this was merely a stepping stone to even greater heights by further upping his volume and efficiency while helping New Orleans secure a playoff spot. He'll also cash out with a lottery jackpot size contract extension. If it's Solid Street, he won't make any dramatic leaps forward, but he won't lose ground either. If it's a worrisome way, that's when Ball turns back into a non-shooting pumpkin and his lack of offense derails the entire Pelicans attack. It's tempting to treat his improvements as sustainable, but he had his ups and downs before the league went on a hiatus in mid-March. The Pels can't afford any inconsistency going forward, meaning he must be at his best while effectively facing playoff defenses. New Orleans needs Ball to perform well during the 8 seeding games and that can't be the most comfortable position given his struggles over the past 2 seasons. Next up is Luka Doncic, Dallas Mavericks. The list of players to average at least 28 points, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds by their age 20 season starts and stops with Luka Doncic. He debuted as an all-star this year and he did so in the starting lineup. He paced the Mavericks in points, minutes, shots, assists, and usage rate, and made them the most efficient offense in NBA history. He also has them better prepared to compete for the crown than you might think. While that sits 7th in the West in winning percentage, they have the conference's 3rd best net rating. But this is a greedy business. For all the draws Dodgers has dropped to date, the pressure to do more still hovers over his head. He should collect multiple MVP votes this season, but his superstar ascension might lose a bit of luster if he can't conjure up any playoff success. When he addressed reporters for the first time since the season suspension, he spoke of his team heading to Orlando without pressure. Maybe that's the case internally, but external expectations are enormous for Doncic's playoff debut. We know he could be a megastar in the regular season. Now we get to see whether he can find yet another gear when it matters most. Next up is Brandon Ingram, New Orleans Pelicans. The 2016 number 2 overall pick has been aligning puzzle pieces all season to finally fuel his climb up to the hoops hierarchy. He had offered glimpses of future stardom before, but this was the real thing. 24.3 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 4.3 assists per game with a 46.6-38.7-85.8% shooting slash. This year was about me just going out and showing where I belong and excel in this new space, Ingram said. I think playing in this could help me out. As Ingram acknowledges, there's more work to be done. As tempting as it is to slap an a grant in his campaign, the actual assessment is an incomplete. He's still walking a tightrope as a restricted free agent in a cash trap market. He has dealt with several injury issues in the past and doesn't have the largest sample of star level play. He appears to be in the process of turning the corner, but he needs to complete the task for this to be a successful business trip. And last up is Jason Tatum, Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum had superstardom within his grasp before the hoops world was forced into hiatus. He had already secured his first all-star spot, but this was a different level of basketball brilliance. Over his final 15 outings, Tatum averaged 29.5 points, 7.9 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 1.5 steals, and 1.1 blocks while hitting 48.3% of his field goals and an unreal 46.6% of his triples. The kid is special, James said. There's a reason he's a first-time All-Star. He's been special all year. Tatum wasn't special like this, though. 
Prior to that stretch, he was averaging 21.5 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 2.9 assists, while shooting 43.5% from the field and 36.6% from three. Those were breakout numbers given where he had previously set the bar, yet it also shows how great the challenge is ahead. His scorching hot version seemed capable of potentially steering the Celtics to the Eastern Conference side of the playoff bracket, but no one would have even considered shouldering him with that kind of burden last postseason when he averaged 15.2 points, had more turnovers than assists, and connected on only 32.3% of his long-range looks. Tatum has clearly grown since then, but can he consistently be the number one option on a heavyweight contender? That's one of the many things we're eager to learn in Orlando. That's it for today's Sports Mafia video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to see more Sports Mafia content, click the circle subscribe button so you never miss a single video. Hope you enjoyed.